Hey guys, how are you all today? It's the beginning of May and it's so chilly. But I love May. Ignore that siren. Thank you. Um, I love this time of month because finally, I'm gonna, <laughs> am I gonna start? No, well, let's carry on. I love this time of month because finally, everything that's going on is going on outside. So all the indoor sewings are done. And now we're getting into that time for all the direct sewings outside. But it's really, really chilly. Anyway, I'm gonna just turn you guys around so we have a little look at the plot at the beginning of May. So in some ways, you won't see huge changes. I think, generally speaking, my plot doesn't really look very different or doesn't really come into its own until July because I do so much direct sewing. But finally, here, there are three rows of parsnips in, interplanted with the calendula, and they are heavily, heavily fortified. Look, bricks, bricks, planks everywhere against our lovely friends the foxes i should just add it's about six o'clock in the evening which is why it's a little bit dark uh, but it's been really busy today so i haven't been able to film but the lovely thing about it being six o'clock is the birds are piping up again so this bird is now ready for some direct sowing of chickpeas four rows and I think I'm only going to be able to manage to get in maybe one row of quinoa here. But I had a slight genius idea about getting a second row in, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so yeah, that's all going to be literally in the next week. It's all going to be sewing, 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 sewing. Just over to the spuds, my four rows of spuds, which have now been earthed up twice. So if you remember, I don't know if you can sort of see the edge of the path over there. When they were originally planted, they were planted about six inches, eight inches lower than the height of the path. And the mounds, of course, were in the middle. Now the mounds have moved back over onto the spuds. I would only normally have thought about earthing them up once so far, but because we've had a few nasty frosts, they've been earthed twice. And I don't think there's any earth left for the predicted frosts we're going to have this week. Honestly, I don't know what's happened to the temperature. We're barely into double digits each day, which is really chilly for this time of year, but maybe some fleece. So what I was saying about the quinoa, if you see um, sort of between the two rows of spuds here, where there was the big mound of earth, which has now been moved both sides to earth up the spuds, I'm thinking about in this trench to sow another row of quinoa because it will actually get to, I believe, about six foot tall. So it will be way bigger than the spuds. And what else am I going to do in that ground otherwise? I think if I don't go with sowing another row of quinoa, I will certainly sow some flowers in that gap. Uh, to just come up and poke up above the spuds for a little bit of colour. The garlic, oh, they're looking so miserable. So miserable, in fact, that I'm beginning to think that my luck with garlic has run out and I may actually... Oh, I hate giving up. I don't want to give up trying. But the last two years they've been absolutely rubbish. I just want to point something out. Can I text step tenderly? On this one, I don't know if you can see this scrape forming. It's what's called the scrape. This is actually the garlic forming its flower stem. <laughs> Excuse me, given half the chance, that will form a flower, which will form the seeds, etc. etc. However, I don't let them form flowers because I want all the energy to go back down into the bulb. But what I do do, I cut the scrapes out and I use them in the kitchen. So I'll show you some of that later this week, hopefully. This bed, still empty. Again, this is all going to be direct sown this week. At the top end where the sweet corn is going to go, uh, which is coming on beautifully at home, I did have a couple of seeds spare left over, so I've direct sowed them. 
just to just see the difference. Uh, so that if I do it again, will I want to take up room at home with uh, indoor sewing or do I want to just go with direct sewing? So that's my little experiment, we'll see how it goes. Onions, red barons, looking lovely. Over the top of the hoops to the whites, which are jet set, again looking lovely. Oh, and <laughs> we have a visitor. Rusty, get out of my onions. What is it with cats and onion beds? Oh, here's a gorgeous puss. Okay, see you later, Rusty. Then within the hoops, I've got three rows of carrots. Um, on this side, they're gonna be the earlier ones and then two rows of the autumn and winter carrots. And then where you see the strings, I will later plant my leeks, which, <laughs> are you hungry, buddy? Shall I feed you? Um, the leeks are actually now in the cold frame, hardening off a bit. It's that game of dare where we're sort of part, oh, he's stamping off. Yeah, we're part waiting. We're, part, we're playing this sort of game of dare with Mother Nature about has the frost gone? Do we dare harden things off, bring things from home? Ah, oh, hello, what's this? It's a timber yard. Hmm, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Just to say this is where the squash are all going to go and then at the far end, the tomatoes and leeks, they won't go in until at least the end of May, if not the beginning of June and even when they go out there'll be some protection because they're delicate little plants um yes gorgeous timber i'll show you that in a minute or talk about it in the legume bed i now have my first couple of rows of peas so i've done calved and wonder in this couple of rows um i love calved and wonder and it's what my granddad always used to grow so i grow it for him and then in front, where there's nothing yet, in about three or four weeks, I'll do another sowing just to kind of prolong my harvesting. Uh, and the ones at the front will be Lincolns. And I finally, obviously you're not going to see anything yet, but I finally have all my beans in. Actually, let's go this way round and then you will see on the labels. Oh, mustn't forget to water the cold frame. So, oh, bumpy path, yay, look, some little labels, going to tell you, Helder, pea beans, is that what I've got in there yet, pea bean, over here, a row of gigantes, a row of bolotti, and then, oh, my absolute delight this year, look how well the broad beans are doing, chuffed with them. It's really that time of year as well to have a really close look. Uh, uh, see that? First of the black fly. So that whole top, let's get it, nip it out. They love the tender tops. If they're not too manifested with black fly, you can actually pinch out the tops and then take them home and cook them. But this is the exciting bit. Look at those pods. They're getting fatter by the day. Loads and loads of pods coming. Oh, can't wait. I reckon in about, ooh, three or four weeks, I will be harvesting my first ones and feeding my face with broad bean hummus. Can't wait. Ah, oh, this little one. Oh, poor little one. You see, got a little bit frost damaged. I didn't have enough fleece to cover them. Um, and I felt that because they'd been out most of the winter that they would hopefully be sturdy enough to withstand the frost, but obviously that little tender one didn't withstand. Uh, this little end bed here, this will be sown again this week, direct sowing. I'll do a couple of rows of fennel and then two weeks later, I'll do a couple more. Looks like the birds have been splashing in the um, in the insect drinking station. And then underneath I've got a, those lovely red cabbages my friend gave me. And because there's quite a bit of space between them, I might whack a few spinach in there. 
nice and shady so hopefully they won't bolt so it's all about direct sowing now which is terribly exciting but it's also about what's going on in the wee beastie here oh my goodness it's all go it's so busy in the cold frame it's so busy with all the indoor plantings at home it's just ridiculous there is no space anywhere <clears throat> let me see if i can show you in here a bit so over on the far side the echinacea oh, they're taking forever but then i've got some sort of i've got stock and cosmos and nicotiana and etc etc then all these brassicas which need pricking out so I've got broccoli, cavallo nero, purple sprouting broccoli, savoy. Oh, it just makes me want to eat cabbage looking at this lot. Gorgeous. And then right down here, they're looking a bit mashed by the breeze and a little bit shocked at the moment. But this is all the celeriac that I started indoors in February. I really want to get them out, but as I say, it's, it's still a bit... Um, still a bit chilly i'm just trying to turn you around a bit and show you then i've got three pots of leeks there they're hardening off and fattening up so they'll go and join the carrots under that netting and then at the far end as far as the eye can see beans so historically i've always sown my beans direct and never bothered with doing them in pots but because of the massacre last year, I've learned to have a few as backup, just in case the sugs invade and have all of this lot before they've had a chance to get going. So that's kind of where we're at in terms of sowing, hardening off, planting, what have you. In terms of other developments on the plot, I have finally, <laughs> after, I don't know, is it three or four years? Finally starting to develop this bed. This long, skinny bed. Now, originally, I'm just going to step to the side to give you a view. Originally, this was, the idea was that this was going to be a herb bed. However, a bunch of herbs do not a meal make. So what I'm going to try and do this year if we have some rain in order to break these clods down um, is the this is where I want to build the A-frames the A-frames so I can have my climbing baby butternuts so hopefully this will be a whole nother squash bed hopefully, hopefully, hopefully and then over here <gasps> where's that big pile of rubbish gone, Vivi? it's moved so if I come in line here this is where the committee are insisting that there is a path now, as you can see, my neighbour's plants invade the path, but never mind. So, in line with the compost bins, the plan is to build a fence all the way across this back end of my plot. Then, you see sort of the area is sort of half, it's not really half marked out, but where the edge of the grass is, is to build sort of like a wooden deck and then a big wooden planter next to the last compost bin there as somewhere to maybe eventually have a bench to sit on or even a bench to open up and store my bean poles in in the winter that is going to be starting in the next few days and i have to get it started in the next few days because yes all of that wood has to be gone in the next three weeks in order to make way for my gorgeous squash and pumpkins and cucumbers and everything else that's going to go in there so i love this time of year on the plot it still looks so bare and forlorn but to me i can already picture the height of summer bursting with all the greens all those different greens bursting with the pots of colour from all the flowers feeding me every single day giving me stuff to store for next winter it's just the best time of year and it's so hard to tear myself away from the plot each night 
but now I need to go home and cook because I'm hungry. So I'll say cheerio for now, happy direct sewing, and I will see you all really soon. Take care.